Hey there, welcome to my office. That's an artwork that was originally made for Perimeter's Day of Discovery. My mom liked it and she likes to copy paintings and I guess it was in a Van Gogh style. So she just made it for me. My apartment used to have a lot of like little like copies of Van Goghs around and so I thought this one's Perimeter so I'd put it here. I am Sabrina gonzalez Pasterski, and I am a theoretical physicist at Perimeter Institute. I'm in the Quantum Fields and Strings group and I am the lead of the Celestial Holography Initiative. Celestial holography uh, is two words, celestial and holography. So by celestial, we literally mean look up at the night sky, like how do you encode the physical universe as a hologram? Now, we say that very boldly, but when we say mean physical universe, we mean uh, almost flat space times. So we get rid of the cosmological constant, and then you're roughly trying to see how do those space times, if they were holographic, have certain features that you wouldn't have in the usual anti sitter uh, holography uh, version of the story. We want to apply the holographic principle to the real world that is celestial and then holography is this notion that quantum gravity is a lower dimensional non-gravity theory. Most of the books are from I guess undergrad. There are definitely some about like aircraft that I had gotten when I thought I wanted to be an aerospace engineer. One 14 year old is building a single engine airplane. So this has all of your engine instruments, fuel levels, oil pressure, oil temperature. Do you remember sort of what it felt like the first time you were up in the air? It's really like freedom, that, a flight that nothing else, like you can't really compare it to. Various like manuals for the Cessna and then the plans for the kit plane. I said it was like 2,200 hours or something. The, but the plane I flew when I was younger was a Cessna 150. The thing that I love the most about being a theoretical physicist is that you're part of this long legacy of trying to understand the fundamental laws of nature. Anything that's not a physics textbook is a gift from someone. Little toys. This was like award ceremony and Simone Biles also got one of those. It is my honor to be here and inspired by you and I congratulate you for this distinguished award in your contributions in education. Please. I'm just a grad student and there are a lot of us, so this is so cool because <laughs> most days I'd just be in the department reading. I definitely found my people here. So the funny thing about it is like they dream bigger in a way that's like maybe orthogonal to necessarily physics. If you want to do amazing physics, you have to be a bit realistic about like who you're going to individually be. There is a sense in which perimeter has more options for like that excellence. So I think what I'm saying is that you know everybody wants to have a big discovery, win some prizes and be like an awesome physicist. Like that's the goal. Like nobody doesn't want that. But how do you approach that? Do you have to like fight the competition? Or can you see that if nobody else is playing that game, there's a real advantage to working more collaboratively with people. And then also talking more can help improve ideas. I think being a physicist at Perimeter means doing your research, but also caring about the physics enterprise. And definitely that latter pet I love because like, you know, knowledge is power in some sense. And I really wish that were true. <laughs> and it'd be fun if it, if it could be. <laughs>